Hello, this is Martin Patella, health coach at Life Enthusiast, and today I want to talk to you about methylene blue. I've done a lot of looking around, um, considering what is or isn't the right thing to do around the methylene blue. I feel confident that what we have is actually good in the following manner. Um, first of all, methylene blue is a very old thing. It actually is the first drug that the FDA ever approved back in the 1800s. 1800s, not 1900s, 1800s. It was first introduced in 1778 in Germany as a dye. In fact, this blue is the same dye that makes your blue jeans blue. But when taken orally, it actually has some significant benefits. It's in an industrial dye, so you, you can buy it quite inexpensively in the industrial grade. Right? We have technical grade, which is what you would use for jeans, and then we have pharmaceutical grade, which is what you want to use looking for companies that don't sell it in just the lab grade, where you can buy quite inexpensively a box of it. You can buy 10 grams, 100 grams, whatever weight of it in laboratory grade and use it. But that's not going to be uh, certified to be free of contamination. And the contamination will probably include heavy metals like cadmium, arsenic, lead, who knows what else. But definitely heavy metal contamination. I'm concerned that there will be some unscrupulous buyers or sellers, I should say, who would uh, go and buy this just laboratory grade and mix it. It's not complicated. I mean, all you really need to do is understand the scale and how much to use and get with it. And I'll explain that. But before I do that, let's talk about what it is and how it works. Right? And there are medical uses and there are chemical uses. Right? Um, dealing with this, whenever you put it on, it's a strong blue dye. And when you put it in your mouth, it will stay in your mouth blue. And of course, when you put it uh, on anything, surfaces, it will stain. I was just dumping some in my sink. And interestingly enough, it actually stained all the things that were not completely 100% washed off. So even stainless steel sink had some stuff stuck to the surface and whatever was stuck to the surface was getting stained blue. It was quite entertaining. We had to actually use bleach and scrub it to get all of the blue off of it. The original medical use was the treatment of meth hemoglobinemia which is the iron in hemoglobin becomes oxidized to the ferric state, which makes it unable to transport oxygen effectively. And your blood turns the color of chocolate when this illness sets in. And so this methylene blue helps to restore that. And this would be used in high doses. It was used to treat cyanide poisoning, and urinary tract infections. It's kind of interesting. But the way this thing works, it's both an oxidizer and antioxidizer. It's the ROS, reactive oxygen species in the redox sense, meaning that it's capable of supporting the reduction side of the transaction and the oxidation side of the transaction. The main purpose here is to support the body with electrons. I already spoke about this before, but electron is the currency of life. Electron taken away is oxidation. Electron given back is reduction. Aging is oxidation. Well, all burning is oxidation. Like when you take a piece of wood, which is stored carbon, and you light it on fire, you are releasing carbon in the form of carbon dioxide into the atmosphere because the carbon is getting oxidated 
with oxygen. And at the same time, you're releasing heat, energy. When you are burning glucose, sugar, in your body to convert it into energy, same thing's going on. You will be exhaling carbon dioxide and you'll be releasing energy into your body. And at the same time, you're going to be creating excess heat and that will also create oxidative stress. And this is called the Krebs cycle and there's a complicated process by which we convert the glucose with the help of vitamin B3, that would be nicotinamide or nicotinic acid, into pyruvate and uh, the ATP or ADP, adenosine diphosphate, turns into ATP, a higher energy state, triphosphate. And so when you release the extra phosphate, the energy is released. You can look it up. It's not particularly mysterious. There are six basic steps to how the cycling of energy status of the ATP and ADP changes and how you release energy. Now, what's interesting about this Krebs cycle is that when it runs in the right direction, it's called respiration. And it's releasing about 34 units of energy per unit of um, glucose. And then this thing also can run backwards in the form of fermentation, where instead of turning the glucose into carbon dioxide and water, you're actually turning it into lactic acid because it's without respiration, it's not fermentation, it's without oxygen. And the output is only two units of energy out of a unit of glucose rather than 34. So it's 17 times less effective. And it's called fermentation. And when that happens permanently, we would call that cell cancerous. Cancer is like that. Cancer cell is only converting glucose into lactic acid, not into carbon dioxide. And interestingly, just on the margin here, normal cell, as in healthy cell, can also use fats to convert into energy. Cancer cells can't do that. They only can consume uh, glucose. The point being is that when we supply plenty of electrons into the system, we are enabling this to function correctly. Ethylene blue is a chemical. It's not a natural thing. It's an invented dye. It's uh, nitrogen, sulfur, and chlorine in it. It actually starts as a green looking powder. And once you hydrate it, dissolve it in water, it turns blue. There are extensive, I mean, extensive health benefits to it. Originally, this was used as a malaria treatment. Malaria being an illness of viral sort, right? There's a viral component to it. It's a toxicity inside the body that's causing the, the blood illness called malaria, which comes with fevers and so on. Methylene blue was used in a fairly high dose. Later, it was converted into hydroxychloroquine. So hydroxychloroquine is a derivative of methylene blue. It's a more purified version of it. And uh, hydroxychloroquine is the use, uh, is the chemical used to treat uh, malaria today. It stains your tongue blue. It stains your uh, urine blue too. What's interesting about the methylene blue, it functionally is somewhat similar to hemoglobin. I mentioned the, uh, the illness of the blood where the hemoglobin is not able to carry oxygen because it was turned into ferritin. This methylene blue is able to reverse that or compensate for that and allow the body to carry oxygen. Mitochondria are the tiny little furnaces inside of every single cell that will convert food into energy. So glucose burning up inside of the mitochondria. Depending on which cell, 
it says there will be different numbers of mitochondria, really high numbers in cells in the heart and in the brain, where the intensity of energy consumption is the highest. And wouldn't you know it, this uh, problem that we have recently had with the illness called COVID, it affects people in three ways, right? It affects their heart, as in uh, myocarditis, inflammation of the heart. Uh, brain, as in glial problems, cancers of the brain. And three, general fatigue, right? Like long COVID, tiredness. And four, illnesses of the blood, right? Clotting, coagulation, that sort of stuff. But the first and foremost, what we have noticed is that people who were turning up in the hospitals were turning up with very low oxygen level, like the normal oxygen level in your blood or in your tissue is somewhere around 98, 99%. 96, 97 is pretty good, 98 is super healthy. People were turning up with 60% oxygen, blue lips, blue fingers, and the treatment that they were receiving was they were putting them on ventilators, treating it as if this problem was a lung problem, not enough lung function. But that's not really what was going on. It was more akin or more like cyanide poisoning, where the blood is not carrying enough oxygen. And methylene blue would have been the perfect antidote because it raises dramatically the body's ability to absorb oxygen. This compound being electron carrier is improving our ability to generate energy, which of course improves our thinking, our memory about every life function. So it's automatically also reversing the problem with the mitochondria being dysfunctional and the Krebs cycle going into reverse and the subsequent uh, illness that I don't really want to keep naming here. Your cells will become functioning normally when you raise the level of oxygen. And the way you raise the level of oxygen is in fact with the methylene blue. It's the alternative pathway bringing oxygen in if the hemoglobin pathway is under functioning. So you will be accomplishing two things, more energy and reversal of aging. So reversing the aging symptoms. What are they like? Right? All of the brain problems, recall, memory, ability to think clearly, ability to learn, ability to convert uh, short-term memories into long-term memories. So when you take this, as you're trying to learn things, you will actually remember what you're reading better. In the articles that you can read about it, one, antidepressant properties. It's really um, helping the body to function well. There is a problem here because if you are on medications, either SSRIs or MA. Oh, if you are on any drugs that affect moods, specifically antidepressants, SSRIs or MAOIs, what you need to do is be working very closely with the physician that prescribed you that, and you can probably get off of those medications, but you have to do that with a great deal of care while supplementing Methylene blue. Methylene blue specifically increases the activity of serotonin and norepinephrine, which both are critical to regulating your mood. Anti-inflammatory effects, which means chronic diseases like Alzheimer, cancer, heart disease, those are all inflammatory diseases. Well, in fact, almost all problems of aging are inflammatory. So specifically, the Alzheimer, of course, is chronic problem, metabolic problem in the brain. Another name for Alzheimer was diabetes type 1.5, which is 
essentially a diabetic reaction in the brain. The brain is a huge consumer of glucose. 20% of the glucose that your body consumes is consumed by the brain. So with the presence of methylene blue, we have an improvement in the mitochondria, in the brain cells, therefore better utilization of oxygen, therefore not as many toxic proteins are going to be building up in the brain. These are known as the amyloid plaques. And they will not be forming because there's no deficiency of oxygen, there's no inflammation, and therefore we will either stop or even reverse this. Methylene blue has been used to treat sepsis. If you have sepsis, blood poisoning, you're facing a serious crisis. The survival rate was greatly improved by administering methylene blue. Another inflammatory disease is Parkinson's. It's the neurodegenerative disease, as in the dopamine-producing neurons in the brain are affected. Since we are improving the levels of dopamine and serotonin and norepinephrine in the brain, we are going to be also reversing or at least helping to re reduce the symptoms that would be associated with Parkinson's. I mentioned cyanide poisoning. Cyanide is a molecule that will cause the body to be not able to carry oxygen. Cyanide poisoning does happen, and if it should come your way, well, methylene blue will treat that by binding to the cyanide and converting it to a non-toxic form. So there's this syndrome called acute respiratory distress, ARDS. People with pneumonia or sepsis may end up in that. Like if you have somebody in severe respiratory distress, they are essentially not able to carry enough oxygen. People get administered methylene blue, lung function improves, inflammation is reduced, and people return to normal function. Neurological disorders, that's, does this include multiple sclerosis, traumatic, traumatic brain injury, TBI, spinal cord injury, and stroke. Right? Stroke is essentially a oxygen deprivation injury in the brain. So when you bring in more oxygen with methylene blue, you will very likely improve function. So it will protect the neurons, reduce the inflammation, and uh, reduce the severity of, of the consequences. Radiation-induced injury. So what is radiation-induced? Well, these days, radiation is applied in cancer therapy apply radiation, try to burn up, injure the cancer cells, the tumor cells. And of course, in doing so, they will inevitably also injure some normal cells. When you start using methylene blue, you are going to be helping the body to recover itself, recover the normal cells back to full function. So diabetes, an illness of inflammatory sort that's associated with high blood glucose levels. Methylene blue has been found to improve insulin sensitivity and reduce blood glucose levels. Insulin sensitivity, this is a big deal, right? You have heard of insulin resistance. If you should end up with insulin resistance, that means that you have high circulating glucose, high in circulating insulin. The insulin is the signaling molecule that is asking cells to take up glucose. But insulin resistant cells won't do it. Methylene blue will help with this. Stomach ulcers. People taking methylene blue have been able to deal with H. pylori infection. This is a bacterium that's directly associated with stomach ulcers. So when you take a high oxidation agent, such as methylene blue, you will, of course, end up killing off microbes. We have mentioned various microbials, such as 
the famous COVID. Earlier, I mentioned that this method in blue will help deal with infections. Corona is a coronavirus, so any flu, really, anything that's viral or bacterial, so bacterial as in the H. pylori just mentioned, viral as in common flu. Well, here's another one. The Steve Barr, which is a viral condition associated with Lyme disease. People who suffer with Lyme disease have long-term effects of chronic fatigue, which essentially is an inability to convert food into energy, low oxygen levels. So when we start administering methylene blue, we are wiping out the infections. We are bringing in oxygen to the tissues. We are improving the mitochondrial function. The symptoms that you have associated with all of these chronic inflammatory diseases are going to start going away. Skin conditions such as psoriasis and eczema are also inflammatory diseases this time of the skin. So when you start taking the uh, methylene blue, you can expect an improvement to these symptoms. This is likely to work on Zika and Dengue, all the other viral attacks that are known to be a threat, right? So H something and something, H1N1, H2N3, I don't know, whatever they call them. Every one of these diseases will be neutralized by this oxidative therapy. Now, I've talked to you about a different or another oxidative therapy that we have, which is a product called Amazing Soak or Amazing O. And we have worked on combining one with the other. We have worked on combining methylene blue and Amazing O to see what happens. And indeed, at a low dose, at low concentrations, these things synergize really beautifully. So you can take one and the other either separately or in low, low concentrations together. So another topic, heart disease management. Your heart is the muscle that consumes a huge amount of energy. It needs a lot of oxygen and it needs a lot of glucose because it's beating a lot, 70 beats per minute one beat per second, give or take, right? 100,000 beats per day. So, of course, it will improve cardiac function and reduce the damage to heart tissues if there should be any damage possible. Methylene blue will promote wound healing. Why? Well, because you are needing energy exchange in order to build new cells. So, it will help to reduce the inflammation at the site and therefore speed up their recovery. Liver disease treatment. Oh. Liver fibrosis and fatty liver disease has been reduced and reversed because, again, of the reduction of the inflammation and the oxidative stress. Therefore, people who are overusing alcohol are protected by using methylene blue. And people who are experiencing alcohol withdrawal, if they are trying to get off of it, they will have a lesser problem, less hard time, right? reducing the severity of alcohol withdrawal symptoms. Probably has to do with both the liver and the brain support. Inflammatory bowel disease, as in chronic inflammation in the gut, ulcerative colitis or Crohn's disease, both will respond positively. There are studies, animal studies, that will reduce the inflammation and the oxidative stress. Osteoporosis is an inflammatory disease of the bone that leads to the loss of the minerals. Also, when I reduce the uh, inflammatory stress, it will also improve the ability of the bones to function correctly. Brain inflammation that's presenting as tinnitus or tinnitus, um, which is buzzing in the ears or ringing in the ears, 
that will also be reduced with the help of methylene blue. Again, same pathway, reducing inflammation and reducing oxidative stress. Neuropathy, chemically induced, chemotherapy induced, all of the nerve damage or inflammatory damage caused by the to toxicity associated with chemotherapy will be reduced. So that will deal with pain, numbness, tingling, all of those symptoms. Recently, just the other day, I was coughing more than usual and I was feeling congested. It was just not fun. I was just finishing a bottle of methylene blue and on the bottom, the dropper wasn't reaching to the bottom, so I just took a swig of it. So I took a dose that was much higher than what I'm normally taking. And within 20 minutes, all of the allergic symptoms that I was experiencing were gone, just disappeared. So clearly this thing is dose dependent. You need to have enough to overcome the stress that's happening to your body. Anyway, I was talking about chemotherapy induced problems. One of the problems is the damage to the DNA of the cells. Right? So when you use methylene blue, again, it's anti-inflammatory oxygen producing effects will help to repair the uh, mitochondrial damage, including uh, mucositis, which is quite interesting. Glaucoma treatment is listed here too. Glaucoma is an eye problem, right? Methylene blue has also been found to reduce intraocular pressure, reversal of optic nerve damage in glaucoma patients. Treatment of Parkinson's disease, definitely helpful with that. Stroke management, of course, when you have a stroke, that's an oxygen deprivation to the tissues. Osteoarthritis, that's a degenerative joint disease, right? This, this time, it's not the bone, it's the cartilage and the lining of the joint, the surfaces that are rubbing against one another. Again, when we are reducing inflammation broadly, we will also reduce inflammation in the joint, and the cartilage is going to be less damaged. Memory is improved because the cellular respiration is improved. This has to do all with the Krebs cycle that I mentioned. There, there are significant warnings applied, and that's specifically for people using SSRI drugs and MAOI drugs. If you are on any of that, you definitely must work with, as far as dosing goes, it goes something like this. The therapeutic dose is one milligram per kilogram or half milligram per pound of body weight. We make our solution by putting 10 grams of methylene blue into a liter of water, well, a liter of solution. We actually put quite a bit of stuff in it. Our methylene blue is based on our MSM gold drops, which means it include, includes several minerals, copper, zinc, silver, gold, and the hyaluronic acid. So when we have 10 grams into a liter, that means that we have 10 milligrams into a milliliter. A milliliter is 20 drops. So that means that there is half a milligram per drop. So your high daily dose would be as many drops as you weigh in pounds. That would be the medical therapeutic dose. When you take a dose that high, you're going to have significant effects. I actually take only something like 8 or 10 drops of it a day, not 160. So you can see the blueness of it. Right? And so this is about 15 drops in the eyedropper. You can take it straight, but here's what it does. Your mouth gets all all blue, so it's probably best if you drink some water after it. But it still will leave your tongue quite blue. So expect that effect. It's kind of fun to watch. 
I was looking at the science of it. It appears to deal with the acetylcholine, is in boosting the acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a chemical. The receptors for acetylcholine are involved in a lot of functions in the autonomic nervous system. So it will reverse the natural die off, the senescence of the cells. That's what you can expect of it. We have it in two sizes. This is a four ounce. We have a one ounce size for people who want to try it. And uh, at a low dose, I mean, I take some somewhere around 10 drops a day. My high dose, therapeutic dose, if I had one of those illnesses like a stroke or Parkinson's or something like that, because I am about 170 pounds, I should be taking about 170 drops. So there will be eight droppers of this every day. I only take one. But as I mentioned, when I took a double or a triple dose, it very quickly reduced a bunch of symptoms that I have. So I would encourage you to ex explore it. I looked online. There is a great deal of interest. There are great many methylene blue videos on YouTube. Most people saying things just similar to what you heard me explain here. The, the reach is broad. I, I've looked for side effects. I've looked for any reasons why I would not take it. I couldn't find anything other than long-term high level use, which I'm not expecting to do. The long-term downside is it exists. If you do high dose, it, it will have completely opposite effects to what you expect. So don't be sustaining a very high dose for very long. Other than that, no concerns. It will repair most every tissue. It will support oxygen availability, which means that you will be aging slower or perhaps even reverse. Methylene blue has been used traditionally in microscopy, in studying of tissues, staining, right? When you need to try and tell things apart, you use a stain in color. And methylene blue is one of the standard stains that has been used in microscopy. And then the second question is, should I be using it every day to sustain the results? Well, it's like with anything else. Right? Like you are breathing all the time. You're generating energy all the time. That means that you're generating oxidative stress all the time. So when you have antioxidants, they are reducing the oxidative stress. Methylene blue being one of those things. Actually, methylene blue is interesting because it's on both sides of the um, equations. It supports redox as a reduction in oxidation. It supports the transactions in both directions. So it's really handy to have that on board because it will enable the energy transactions to work more effectively. So should you take it every day? I'm demonstrating to myself that even at just 15, 20 drops a day, I'm doing fine. Rather than pushing it to the clinical dose of 160, 180 drops, give it a shot. Try it. See what dose might work for you. Yet there is a side effect with this blue coloring, but it goes away, right? Like after I go eat, all of this will go away. It is funny looking, right? Like my entire mouth is stained on top. But I'm telling you, as soon as I eat, it will be. So that's my story. This has been Martin Patella with Methylene Blue Lips. Thank you for being here. You can find me at life-enthusiast.com and at 866-543-3388.